Hey, how's it going everyone? This is Brandon Bias from ChichiChicka.com here with another exciting Tutorial Tuesday. Real quick, before I get into this tutorial, I would like for you guys to do me a quick favor and click the like button in the bottom left hand corner right there because that really does help us out a lot. It gets us noticed a little bit more and not to mention makes us feel good. That lets us know that you guys like our videos and all the, the effort we put into making them nice and high quality for you and all that good stuff. So today we're going to go over this galactic poster image right here. And as you can see, we just got some cool little clouds going on, some stars, some interesting highlights and stuff like that. And overall, it's just a pretty neat effect. Uh, I don't know what else you want me to say. It's, it looks like a freaking galaxy for crying out loud. That's pretty much all there is to it. But I'd like to mention to you guys that this tutorial is not going to be quite as in-depth as the other ones. I'm not going to explain all the little shortcuts and stuff like that because there's a lot to it. And I kind of want to go through this fast and not to mention you guys have been asking for a more advanced tutorial anyways. So I guess this will just have to do. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start up our new document. I'm going to go with something a little different today. I'm just going to go for a 1440 by 900 rather than 1280 by 720. Whatever you do over there is okay. Just make sure you're set to RGB and I guess transparent works for your background. Doesn't really matter. So we'll go ahead and hit OK, and we'll size this up with Control-0 so we can see what we're doing. And I'm just going to rename my first layer BG for background like always. And I'm going to change my foreground color to 131313 13, 13 for the RGB, which is just a really dark gray. And I'm going to fill up my background with that with Alt Backspace and put my foreground and background color back to the default black and white. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab this smoke in the air uh, picture that I grabbed online. I will be able to give you a link to that in the description here. So I'm just going to go ahead and click and drag this up to our document and bring it on back down. And I'm just going to reposition this so that the top is flush with the top of the canvas. And I'm going to move it over so that this little swirl right here is just coming up from the bottom left hand corner. And so I'm going to rename this smoke and put it to a screen for the blend mode there. And then we're just going to change the opacity to 15%. And then we're going to go ahead and add in a little bit of coloring. So I'm going to add in a new layer and call it coloring. And whatever colors you decide to use for the coloring is up to you, but I'm going to go ahead and stick with magenta, purple, and, uh, and a Cheyenne sort of color. And so let's go ahead and grab that color right there, that little Cheyenne, and then we'll just kind of put it in the top left hand corner, grab our purple, put that in the bottom there, and grab our turquoise Cheyenne color and put that in the top right. So that should be pretty good right there. We'll go ahead and set the blend mode of that to overlay. You can set that to something else like color or soft light if you so choose. Whoops, don't need a new layer just yet. We actually just need to duplicate the smoke copy. And we're going to put that above our coloring and set that to color dodge. And put the opacity up to 20% rather than 15%. And so just to enhance the smoky feeling, we're going to size this up with the transform tool, which is control T or command T for Mac users out there. And I'm just going to size this up to 115% and zoom back in and reposition it so that the smoky area over here matches up a little bit better. And then over here, it just kind of gets a little bit more like smoky and just odd looking and stuff like that. So I will just uh, commit those transformations right there, and we'll move on to adding in some clouds. So we'll add in a new layer called clouds, and we're just going to go ahead and render some clouds in black and white like so, and just change the blend mode to overlay, and that's all there is for that. And so next, I'm just going to go ahead and take care of a little level, a little curves adjustment because everything is looking a little bit dark. So I'm going to amp up the curves a little bit by bringing in the middle up just a little bit right there. And then a little bit before and after. As you can see, it just kind of brightens everything up nicely for you right there. So we'll go ahead and add a new layer. And we're going to call it Distant Stars because this is going to be the layer for our distant stars in the background of the clouds and all that. So we'll go ahead and fill that in with black. And we'll add a noise filter to it right there and so the amount is just going to be 10 percent the distribution is going to be gaussian and we're going to make that monochromatic so that's all black and white and gray rather than have a bunch of random colors and all that and i'm going to zoom in to 100 percent just so i can see the noise a little bit better and i'm going to bring up the levels adjustment for that with control l and so i'm going to bring in the blacks 
so that way we can start getting rid of a lot of the noise and bring in the white so we can really bring out some of those stars and then just bring in the blacks a little bit more just so that way we are not just overwhelming the graphic with the crap load of stars and all that and so that's looking pretty good right there we got 48 for our blacks and 141 for our whites right there so we'll go ahead and hit OK and we'll call that good and we're gonna set the blend mode of that to screen and then we're gonna add in a layer mask on that and fill in that layer mask with some clouds so that way it kind of has random sets of opacity and stuff like that all throughout it kind of gives it a little bit more depth to it and something that I just noticed about the clouds is that it's kind of uh, darkening up the little swirl right here so I'm gonna go back to my clouds layer and add a layer mask to it and I'm gonna bring in my brush and just kind of paint it in black right there so we can get rid of those clouds that way we know that's there and there's no clouds in the way and so now that we've got our distant stars and everything else in place, we're going to go ahead and add in our text. I'm going to go ahead and use the Devil Breeze font that I used in the last tutorial. I will give you the link for that again. And I'm using the Demi style with a 100 point font. And this little AA thing is set to crisp. So I'm just going to go ahead and type in chit chit check it. And the C's and I think I accidentally capitalized the H but it looks good anyway so no big deal. I'll just kind of position that somewhere over here a little bit and then I'll type in productions with a capital P and a capital R again just because it looks cool and so I'm just gonna go ahead and make this K and U match up a little bit right there that way it you know, just kind of looks kind of interesting just as it is and so I'm gonna go ahead and go over here and merge these two layers together with control E or command E if you're on a Mac there and I'm gonna rename this text and I'm going to zoom back out and maybe reposition this a little bit, maybe about right there. Actually, I'm going to move it over just a smudge. Uh, looking pretty good. So where we're going to go ahead and do the whole uh, cloud layer mask thing again. So add in a layer mask and put in some clouds on it, just a little opacized in different areas and all that stuff. And now we're going to duplicate that with Control J or Command J again if you're a Mac user. And we're going to change up the clouds on there. You know, using that little filter shortcut thing and then we're gonna go back to this uh, thumbnail right here for the copied text there and we're gonna add a Gaussian blur to it and we're just gonna keep that around two pixels just so it gives it a little bit of a blur but you can still see what the text itself is and so we'll hit OK and we're gonna change up the blend mode to overlay and so now if we zoom in on the text right here you should see that it's kinda see-through in places a little darker in others and just overall just kind of blends pretty nicely and next up we're gonna go ahead and add in some more stars into the image right here so we'll go ahead and add in a new layer and we'll just call it stars and we're gonna go back to our brush tool with the letter B and I'm gonna swap over to this set of star brushes by Demosthene or however the crap you pronounce that name right there and so uh, if you need this brush set I'm definitely gonna add a link for you in the description or you can just ignore this part completely completely up to you and I'm gonna go with this third brush right here and change the size to 40 pixels and then we need to go over here to our little brush menu you can get to that by going to window brush or F5 and you do have to have your brush tool selected in order to open it just letting you know and so all we're going to do is make sure that our spacing is set to 1000% and then we're going to check mark our shape dynamics, make sure our size jitter is all the way up to 100%, set the control to pen pressure, the minimum diameter to 0%, and then 0 off, 0 off, all that good stuff for the shape dynamics there. Hopefully you've got that. And so we're going to enable scattering next and we're just going to set it to 1000% for the scatter the pen pressure for the control, 1 for the count, and then 100% for the count jitter and the control is off. And of course making sure our smoothing is on as well because that's always nice to have. And so now making sure that we've got white as our foreground color down here, we're just going to start clicking and dragging and painting in random stars. It should automatically just kind of scatter around because we mess with those shape dynamics and stuff like that. So we'll just add some in random spots right there, and that's looking pretty good. So now we're just going to go ahead and add in a different kind of star. So I'm going to go with this last one right here, but maybe not so big, maybe 30 pixels instead. 
and so we need to go back to our brush and make sure that those are checked back on again because whenever you change up your brush it tends to turn that stuff off for you so make sure that you've got those back on and we'll close that up and add in a couple more stars so I'm just kind of start painting in maybe a little bit more over here just a couple here and there and that's looking pretty decent right there so now what we're gonna do with these stars is go ahead and add an outer glow to them and the blend mode of that is gonna be color dodge the opacity we're gonna amp up to 100 percent and we're gonna change up the color to a sort of lightish blue right there so the color that I'm using right now is 007 EFF if you feel like using the same color that I just found out randomly and so if we zoom in, you should be able to see that these stars have a slight bluish hue to them. So that's looking pretty good right there. And so the next thing we're going to go ahead and take care of is adding in those highlights that we saw that were just kind of randomly placed on the canvas. So we'll add in a new layer and we'll call it highlights. And we're going to put that into a group with control G and call that highlights as well. And we'll go back to the layer and we're going to have to go back to our brush and reset it. Yes, I do want to reset my brushes and go to this soft guy right here. And so I'm just going to size up my brush with the right bracket until it fits the size of the CKDU right there. And then I'm just going to add in a spot right there and then just kind of randomly place uh, different sizes of spots to represent highlights. Okay, so once you've randomly placed a couple spotlights around, you know, here and there, go ahead and set the blend mode of those highlights to overlay. And you can see that not a lot is going on with those, so we're just going to go ahead and duplicate those highlights with Control J, and then just keep duplicating them until we think they look all right. And that's a little too much for me, so I'm just going to tone those back down by getting rid of that layer. And actually, I don't know kinda of hard to say I actually kinda of like it right there whatever I'll just go ahead and keep that because I kinda of like the overexposed look that I'm getting right there in the middle of the the CK and DU and all that stuff right there alright so next up I'm gonna go ahead and add in some orangish clouds behind the text there so I'm gonna to go to the original text layer right here and add a new layer between the original text and the text copy and we're just gonna call that colored clouds and the color that we're going to be using for this clouds is FEEA00, so it looks like FIA00. I don't know why I caught that. I guess it just kind of makes it easier to remember. And so with this uh, yellowish, goldish color, we're just going to randomly paint in some gold here and there. It doesn't exactly matter where you put it because we're just going to be manipulating this anyway. So once you've uh, put in a couple of just random splotches of gold kind of around the text and just, you know, wherever the crap you want to put it, we're going to go ahead and add in one of those uh, clouds layer masks that we've put on there a couple of times so far. And then with that layer mask selected, we're going to bring up the levels again with control L and we're going to bring in the blacks and change up the midtones and then bring in those whites a little bit. That way we get a more textured look instead of clouds there and we'll hit OK and now we're gonna change the blend mode of this to color dodge and go back to the move tool and kinda of position this a little bit and we're gonna bring up the transform tool and we're just gonna squish this a little bit and maybe mess with the the stretch and then we're just gonna put it wherever we think looks good so right there looks pretty interesting but uh, for some reason it kinda looks a little faded out so I'm gonna duplicate this and set it to overlay and actually I'm gonna tone down that percentage to about 50 and so now we just kinda brighten up the center of those clouds a little bit more and so the last thing there is to take care of is adding in those slanted highlights that you saw in the uh, little example over here these little guys right here huh my clouds turned out a little bit differently that's interesting Oh well, no big deal. Um, back to whatever we were doing, we're just going to go ahead and add in a new layer, call it slanted, put that in its own group, and we're going to call those the slanted highlights. Oops, accidentally added in a little apostrophe at the end, looked kind of ridiculous. And so now we're just going to go ahead and put in maybe like a 70 pixel little, actually we're going to put that down to 60 pixels. 
And we're just going to add in a white splotch here, just wherever we think it needs to go. And so with this white splotch, we're just going to grab our rectangular marquee tool, making sure we're not having any feather or style, anything like that. And we're just going to drag a box around the bottom half of it and delete it. And then deselect and bring up the transform tool. And we're just going to stretch it like so. And then maybe squish it just a little bit. And so how much you stretch it is completely up to you, just whatever looks good. And now we're going to go ahead and turn this 45 degrees. And I'm just going to put it maybe somewhere over here so that it's intersecting one of the spotlights. And then if you hold the Alt key or the Option key if you're on a Mac and click and drag while still on the Move tool, you should be able to duplicate that. And so just kind of do that, just kind of randomly place these wherever you think they would go. I like to intersect them or put them really close to the, uh, the little highlights because when you change up the blend mode later, it ends up looking really cool. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and go through and add in these random highlights. Okay, so that looks like enough highlights to me. I might have accidentally overdone it a little bit, but eh, no big deal. So we're just going to go ahead and merge all of these together, and we're going to change the blend mode of all those to overlay, and we'll just duplicate them maybe three times or so. And that's looking uh, pretty good, so let's take a look. Alright, so that turned out pretty fantastic. Um, thank you for watching this tutorial. I hope you were able to get something out of it. It was uh, definitely a lot of fun learning how to do this myself and then being able to teach you guys this. Uh, it's, it's actually pretty cool. I'm, I'm hoping you guys like it. Um, and speaking of like it, you guys should like this video because I put a good amount of time and effort into making this tutorial and all of our other tutorials. And if you have any questions, just go ahead and send me a message here on YouTube, or you can join our Facebook fan page. A link will be in the description. And there you'll be able to, you know, talk with all the other people that like Photoshop and maybe you can learn some new tricks and all that. So once again, guys, thank you for watching. Hope you learned something new. I will see you next time.